Hi, my name is Glenn Schwartzberg and I'm a Solutions Architect and longtime time S-based developer at Interrail Consulting. I've been helping companies plan for uncertainties for the last 30 years. This is a slide from a briefing Edward Roski did a few days ago. In it, he said, soon you'll be fighting for the survival of your company. And in that, he talked about five tools that you want to use in order to uh, handle this time of change. Well, today I'm going to add a sixth one of those to that tool set that he didn't include in that original webcast. What I'm going to talk about is using SBase Scenario Management from OAC or SBase 19C for doing scenarios. So what is really nice about scenario planning is it's built right into the product. You just have to turn it on. What is also nice is unlike planning or some of the other tools, you don't need to copy a full scenario of data to the new scenario. SBase uses what we call lightweight sandboxes to only store changes, which means that the cube does not grow very much whenever you want to do a new scenario. With S-based sandboxes, you can have up to a thousand different iterations for analysis. Um, now, hopefully nobody needs that many and you can customize how many you want. But there are a few important things that you need to know about enabling sandboxes. First, once you enable sandboxes on a cube, you can't turn it off. So you might want to take a backup of the cube or make a copy of the cube and test it in that environment first. Uh, you'd have to restore the whole in uh, the whole cube in order to get back to where you were before. Sandboxes also only work with hybrid cubes. So you have to turn your cubes on to hybrid and they can work with partial hybrid or fully hybrid cubes. You'll find that you'll have two dimensions added to your cubes, one called sandbox and one called cell properties. The cell properties one, the users don't ever see, so it's just used internally. Existing calculation scripts and load rules don't need to be modified um, for the two new dimensions. They'll work exactly as they are today, but what's really nice is if you launch a script against a sandbox, it will actually work against that sandbox. So what are the steps to using scenario management in SBase? Well, first you have to turn on the sandboxes. And then you have to go into the UI and you have to assign that sandbox for your use. You can then do your modeling in a, one of the scenarios. You can use collaboration and I'll show all of this to you in just a minute. If you have any calculations, you, you can run them. And then finally, you can report on the results and compare different scenarios, do lots of different things. So let's go and see this in action. So the first thing that we have to do is we have to enable the sandboxes in a hybrid cube. And we're going to do that in the UI. So what we're going to do is we're going to go and I created a sample called Sandboxes Basic. And we're going to go inspect the database. Well, first we're going to look at the outline. And you'll notice that there's no sandbox and there's no cell properties dimension. So now we can go inspect it. And on the general tab, you'll notice that sandboxes or scenarios are not enabled. I can enable up to a thousand different scenarios. So I'm just going to leave it at a hundred and we're going to be okay. Now it's behind the scenes, it's churning out and it's making changes to the S-Base cube. And in a minute, I'll show you what that looks like as soon as that's done. So we're going to go back in and we're going to launch the outline. And you'll notice when it comes up that there is a new sandbox dimension as the first dimension in the cube. And there's a new dimension called cell properties. The sandbox cube, you'll see in it that we have uh, a whole bunch of different uh, sandboxes. Base is where all of the data gets loaded to initially. The sandboxes are your play area. And then the cell property has a couple of members in it, but we really don't care about those. Those are really for internal use. So 
So now we've enabled the sandboxes on the server. So what are we going to do next? So now we can actually use them. So you'll see here we have the sandboxes. What we're going to do is we're going to go into what we, the scenarios card once we get there. And I'm going to search for my data application called Sandbox. And we have no sandboxes yet, so I'm going to create it. I'm going to give it a name. And I actually misspell the name here. It's, it should be best case instead of best cast. And um, I'm going to give it a due date. It's very important. So we're going to put this now. And we're going to allow it to use calculated values. Now what you'll also notice that there's a user tab. So if I want other users to be able to collaborate in this sandbox, I can add them in and use them. So I'm going to go ahead and save this. And it takes a few seconds. And you'll notice that it now comes up in the scenarios display. And I'm going to click on it. And you'll notice that it has assigned me to sandbox 0. Very important to notice that because that's going to be what we're going to use for our analysis. So if I come over to the hamburger and I expand it, what you're going to see is I can do a whole bunch of things. In this case, I want to launch this in Excel because it'll bring it up. It'll show me my base scenario and it will also show me my sandbox. And what you're going to notice at first is that my base and my sandbox are exactly the same. The sandbox actually has no data in it whatsoever, but it's taking the, the totals out of the base scenario. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pivot this around so I can do some data entry here. Give me a minute here. I'm going to make this actual. And again, you'd have to have right access to these intersections to be able to do this. And I'm going to just do this for one period. I'm just going to do it for January, just because I wanted to show you how this all works. So now we can expand out our measures. And within my drivers and ratios section, I have a new metric that I've set up, which is called COGS Adjustment Percent. So I want to look at that. And there's a calculation script that I wrote that I'll show you that actually adjusts my COGS based on that. So let's go ahead and uh, retrieve. We're going to do a keep only on these two. Oops. <laughs> I mean, I, I did a remove only. Let's do a keep only. Let's flash back here for a second. And let's do a keep only. Do it right this time. Now let's pivot this up just to make it easier to see. So you'll notice that I have cogs in both my base and in my um, sandbox. And I've got this adjustment that I'm going to make adjustments to in my cogs adjustment percent in my sandbox. And I'm just going to enter in some values. Now, if you remember, I said that this was my best cast or my best case scenario. So I'm being optimistic in this one. I'm saying that we're going to increase our COGS by a certain amount. And so I'm going to submit the data. And you'll notice that it, it aggregated up because this is a hybrid cube. But it didn't change my COGS in any way. And that's because I need to run a calculation to do it. So let's go look at that calculation. It's a pretty simple calculation. Again, this is just for example. I called it recalculate. And you'll notice that I'm fixing on the bottom level of my dimensions and for actual. And COGS is just equal to the COGS times that adjustment. But there's nothing in here that talks about my, um, my sandbox. But I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to run this calculation. And when I run it, You'll notice it tells me that it's being done against sandbox 0. So it's putting its own fixed statement in that calculation script. So now I can go ahead and launch it. And it's only going to take a half a second. And it's all done. So now if I retrieve my data, you'll notice that my COGS has changed just in um, my sandbox. 
but it stayed the same in the base. And for items that I didn't do anything to, like Connecticut, it just kept the value from the base. It's actually not being stored in the sandbox. It's actually pulling it from the base scenario. So it makes it pretty easy to do this. And you'll notice here, I can compare my base scenario to my, um, to my sandbox and do all sorts of comparisons. If I had multiple sandboxes, I can compare all of those as well. So now that we've done that, let's take a look and see what else we can do with this. So if we want to, I can go in and I can add comments in here. And so I'm going to go ahead and add a comment and just click on here and type in the comment. And I'm a slow typist, apologize. And oops, I made a mistake because my comment didn't show up. So let's try this again. And I'll be, I'll just type in something really quick this time. How about, um, this is a test. Now that what I did wrong is I forgot to save the individual comment last time. So now that I've saved it, now it'll show up in my comments. And you can see that there's one comment I could click on and get it. In addition, I can do things like I can show the changes. And if there's not a huge amount of changes, I'll do it here. Otherwise, I would do it in Excel. If I want to, I could refresh the data, which would basically put it back to um, what it is equal to in base. I could delete this if I wanted to. I could copy it to a new scenario. And an administrator could take my sandbox, say I was doing this for a budget or a forecast, and if this is what I wanted my real forecast to be, I could overwrite my forecast with what I have in one of my sandboxes. So I could take my sandbox zero and have it written back to the base. So with that, you can see how easy it is to be able to do scenario planning in SBase itself. And remember, this is for SBase OAC or SBase 19C. We don't ha currently have the same capabilities in on-prem. We'd have to do it the old way where we copy a whole scenario over and make our changes and adjust our calc scripts and all of that. So if you like what you saw, go to nrl.com slash updates and stay up to date with all the information as it's changing. This is Glenn Schwartzberg with NRL Financial News. Stay safe out there, everybody.